All right. Looks like we got a few more attendees. I think I think we're good to start it off. So first off, thanks everybody for joining this morning or this afternoon. Um, we appreciate you coming by. Hope to you know show you some of the things that we've been working hard on, and hopefully get some good feedback from you as well. Um, so without further ado, I'll kick it off. Um, first off, my name is Brennan Dooley. I'm a technical sales rep for K2 Solar Systems. I help cover the East Coast and the South and uh, a good portion of the Midwest. Um, and I work with Lou Serrano. If you want to introduce yourself, she is my counterpart. We help support our outside sales here at K2. Thank you, Brendan. Hi, everyone. Yes, my name is Lou. I'm working in the technical sales department, as Brendan mentioned, I work with the West Coast. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions about products or if you need help with your projects. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, we would be your, your main point of contact if you have any questions about um, racking in general, you know, uh, different uh, attachment applications, um, you know, tricky roofs that you might come across or, you know, general engineering or installation type questions, we would be your go-to. And then we also have with us Dakota, if you want to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dakota. I am the marketing manager for K2, um, kind of behind the scenes, making sure we get these webinars scheduled for you. So if there's anything that you would like to see from us, please send us a message. Um, I just posted in the chat the link to find your sales reps contact info. So feel free to reach out for them for anything that you might like to see in the future. Thank you for joining us today. All right, so we're going to kick it off. Um, I'll first kind of go through um, a little overview of what we're doing here. So this is our, our sales team. Um, uh, you know, depending on your territory, these would be the people that you would want to reach out to if you have any questions about racking material or new, um, new parts that we have in our product line. Um, this year, we've come out with a new line of attachments, including the splice foot and a full series of tile hooks um, with tile replacement flashings that are making a huge splash. So. Um, you know, we've been making a big push. You know, I know that things have been tough for a lot of people, especially with supply chain disruption and material shortages. But, you know, we've been doing really well in this last year. We've, you know, continually been growing and, you know, adding people to the team. So it's been a very exciting time, very busy, especially at the end of the year. I'm sure you all can relate, but, um, you know, we're getting it done. Thanks to everybody on the team putting in hard work. This is looking to be a banner year. This is the inside sales team. Uh, there's Luce and I. Um, <laughs> that picture was a little bit ago. But uh, yeah, so Nancy and Kelsey would be able to help you with client services. Um, that's like logistics, uh, placing purchase orders, um, things like that. And then Ale has been helping. She helped train me up. But, um, you know, we've all been working together to support our outside sales and, you know, be there however we can for our installers and distributors. So just about K2 in general, um, we specialize in rooftop solar applications, but we have, you know, effective and economical solutions for all kinds of roofs. You know, we worked together on carport uh, structures before we've done um, ground mount and we're kind of moving into that space as we speak. Um, and we're developing a bunch of new systems to try and, you know, expand our reach however we can um, and just be there and uh, be able to help solve the problems that y'all are facing. Um, because you know this industry changes day by day, so we're trying to keep up with the curve. Here at K two, we definitely believe that uh, solar is the right way forward, and think that it can help a lot of people. Um, you know, I think that it's important that we find the right application, uh, making sure that these systems are built to last. Um, we have a twenty five year warranty on almost all of our product lines, so we stand by that, and you know, we think that we have probably one of the best engineered products that you'll find on the market and our service is second to none. At a glance, um, we're headquartered in Germany, um, but we have branches opening up all over the world. Um, we have over 300 employees worldwide. 
10 locations, 100 distributors, and over 16 gigawatts of capacity installed to this day. Here are some of our office locations and uh, the dates at which they opened. We work very closely with our Guadalajara office. That's our sister office and a lot of our, uh, our team, you know, um, you know, we work together very closely. Uh, but we've just opened a few new offices, Australia, Slovenia. Um, thanks for looking up. Here are just some of the places that we've had installations. All right, now into the meat of it. So our online design tool is called K2 Base. Um, and this basically allows you to design uh, systems using Google Maps imagery, satellite imagery. Um, and the software allows you to you know, draw your roof, figure, figure out the dimensions, and then figure out what uh, racking system would be best for your purposes, depending on your uh, roofing material, the slope, um, wind, snow conditions, you know, all of those variables that go into what you need um, to know when you're trying to plan a solar system and, and draw out this array. So this is free for use um, for anybody. You just have to make an account to save it. Uh, it is available now in 25 languages. We just added uh, 10 new languages in the recent update. Um, and we've added a couple new features that'll help with, you know, just user interface in general to make it easy for you. Um, we've added a few new ways to open it up. So. We have user accounts with project memory. That's why we ask you to sign up so that you can save your profile and get that bill of materials um, and structural analysis report. One thing that makes our design tool unique um, in the solar racking world is that we are probably one of the only manufacturers that have structural analysis built into our design tool. So um, whatever you can do in, in base, you know, depending on your engineering, uh, code, if it's ACE 716 or 710 or whatever, you'll, you can rest assured that it will uh, be compliant with those engineering codes. And so anything that you can design in base will be allowed to be installed in real life. Um, we have flat and pitch roof systems uh, available to be designed in the base tool. Um, you know, we've tried to make it as streamlined as possible, but also given people the option to add in more detail um, if they would like. To, to get the most accurate structural analysis possible. Um, you know, we're always trying to improve it. So any feedback is greatly appreciated. Um, you know, us on the inside sales team kind of lead the charge because we're the ones using the tool the most and helping our clients. So if you do have any questions, concerns, um, recommendations, we would greatly appreciate it. But so this is 3.1. This is something that we've been working on for a long time with our team of uh, software developers and we're pretty proud we think that a lot of these uh, features that we've recently added are gonna make a big difference. Um, just to name a few, we have a couple new API bridges where we're working with SMA, SolarEdge, Fronius, Goodwe and Coastal. In the future, um, you know, we hope to add a couple more uh, big um, crossovers with, with um, design software um, that we hope will make life a lot easier. So these are some of the new features that we have um, added. So uh, <laughs> we have an auto save feature that's now available uh, on the tool. So um, you won't lose your progress. You can enable the auto save feature so that, you know, no matter what happens, your, your project work will be saved. We have an undo and redo feature that you can do with control Z, the keyboard shortcut. Um, and we have a couple new options on how to sort your dashboard. So if you have a bunch of projects pending, um, there are different ways that you can sort them um, and kind of filter them out to find what you're looking for. Um, and I'll show you as much. You can change the project status to help organize them um, and stuff like that, the, the levels of filters. One of the other things that we did was that we moved the loads page to the beginning of the, uh, the process. So instead of calculating the, the wind and snow loads and uplift and stuff, for each individual roof, it's done at the beginning, and then the entire uh, system, even if it's spread across multiple roofs, will be calculated at once, as opposed to having to go through for each individual roof and calculate the loads. Um, we've got a couple uh, features that you know just make 
it easier to plan and understand what's going on. Like unusable modules are grayed out. So if it is not compatible size wise or um, for whatever reason with our system, it'll let you know. Um, depending on whatever the issue is, something will pop up and let you know what the, uh, what the problem would be. And hopefully you're able to move around that. Um, it, it shows what our uh, dimension, uh, acceptable dimensions are. And we recently added a new feature. Um, so you can export your bill of materials, you can export a PDF with the structural load analysis. And now we have a, the ability to export CAD files um, in .dwg or .dxf format, um, which can be very helpful for engineers or just whatever you need um, to pass these designs onto. Um, we've gotten requests for that. So we've added that for those of you who are uh, you know, CAD drawing minded. Um, also at the end of the project now, after it's all been designed, you can kind of edit individual roof bill of materials um, and fine tune everything that you need. So if, if you wanna add on a couple more uh, wire clips, you can do that individually for each roof and, and kind of fine tune your bill of materials. Um, we also have the ability to display a price per watt um, and add some custom line items so that you can really refine your, uh, your project. Um, and something that I thought was very cool, which is exciting. So we've been using Google Maps imagery for a while, but we just added the ability to go into Street View in our tool, which is pretty cool. So if, if you have a job, you don't exactly have all of the information that you would like to have, at least you can go on Street View and, and see, okay, this is the slope of the roof. Looks like the roofing material is either tile or composite shingle or metal uh, seam roof. Um, you're now able to do that, which is pretty cool. So we're, we're excited about that. And, now I'm going to go in and kind of walk you through one of our one of our new designs. This is my information. If you want to screenshot that, oh, that number is incorrect, uh, three one eight. But feel free to call me or email me anytime. I'm happy to help. Uh, you know, with any questions that you have, um, always happy to chat. Um, just kind of see what's going on in your in your world. You know, always trying to get a little bit more uh, information. On, on what people are doing. So let's go into the base tool and I'll just kind of walk you through from the very beginning. So we're gonna go to, uh, let's go to the dashboard. We don't need to save that. That was just a little practice. All right. So from the dashboard, uh, here we are in the, um, kind of block setting, but you can see how these things are organized. We have projects that are in progress, things that have been completed. And then for projects that actually get installed, you can sort them like that as well. We also have uh, filters where you can sort by um, you know, system, roof type. So let's say we have a composite shingle. I know that we're using a cross rail on it. Um, and that helps me filter the jobs that I'm looking for so that I'm not uh, you know, scrambling to find a job if it, uh, you know, gets picked up after a month or two of just kind of sitting in limbo. Um, so these project filters are pretty cool, um, very helpful. And then we also have the list view as well. We can kind of go in more detail. You can see who your, your customers and whatnot are. Um, and you can search by name. Um, so these are, the Roof Check app is, um, mainly used in Europe. So this probably doesn't apply to most of you, but uh, you can open the project from a, a .k2o file. So when you do your project, you save it and you can download it in a .k2o file. And that allows you to um, send that file to me or to somebody else who's uh, working on base, and then they can open it up on their end um, and work on it as well. Um, and then uh, here's just how you start a new project. But let's let's um let's actually start from our main splash page. I think that that would be a little bit better just to show you you know what y'all are going to be doing, um, you know when you when you do want to use the tool. If my computer will load and permit, let's see. All right, so we'll start from the K two Systems main page, and I'll show you how uh, to get to the new tool. So here we have a little promotion for our new system. Um, but typically how you would go through is through our service and support uh, banner. And then you would click on K2 base. That's our design tool. 
So you click on that and that'll bring you right to our design. All right, so we're gonna kick it off with a, we're just gonna start fresh. Um, in the side, we do have, you know, uh, publications that we've come out with talking about new products or features and base. We have some tutorials, you know, we have numerous webinars that we've done before kind of talking about different systems, whether it's flat roof, uh, slope roof, tilt up, um, you know, all sorts of different features we have available. And then we also have um, some help sections and the chat. This is what we call the K2 Sherpa, kind of helps you on your journey. Um, and that takes you to a messenger um, app. You can use WhatsApp or iMessage, um, and that'll connect you to Lucerai and will help solve your problem, whatever it is with the tool. If you run into a roadblock or if you have some questions about what is possible, um, that directs you to us and we're always happy. Personal account. Um, information you can go in here change your um, change your language change your uh, measurements so if you wanted to go off of uh, meters like the metric system as opposed to the imperial system you can do that too um, but let's kick it off with a brand new project so here you start they want you to get an address you can do by coordinates or uh, regular address but let's call this the base 3.1 test um and we'll say i know a, a good roof nice and large that's easy to draw on so i'm just going to go there make it a little bit easier and then we can uh, we can indicate whatever we really want to do um, we'll put in our design specification. We'll have 716 there soon. Um, we're still making sure that all of our engineering is up to snuff. Um, and then here you can put some customer information. So, you know, whoever you're, you're helping out, you can put that information there as well. And that will show up in the project uh, PDF, the, the report with all of the structural analysis when you're done. Um, so we have all of this stuff. You can put your plan date of installation and some other tags that you want. Um, but I'm just going to zoom in with this red box and select the uh, the area that I want to work on. We got a nice south facing roof right there with a lot of room to work. We're going to add that as a picture. Don't mind that. It's just snap into the um, to the Google Maps site. Oh, actually, let me. Uh, uh, Let me show you the um, street view. It goes directly to the loads page um, so that it's a little bit faster on the back end once you've designed all of your roofs and whatnot. Um, but here, so you have your Google Maps imagery, you, you know, map view or satellite. Let's drag this little guy out here. Let's see, we, let's say we don't know what the roofing material is. Um, you know, our customer didn't give us good information or whatever. We can give a, a little look ourselves and see. To me, you know, looks like tile. We have a lot of tile in Southern California. Um, so that's good. Looks like not too steep of a slope. So if you don't have that information or if you need to see, if it can be difficult to see uh, obstructions, if you wanted to know how tall these things were, you could look and see, oh, actually that one is a little bit more noticeable than these in the side profile. So that is good information to have. And then you can back out of it. back end of the street view and then we will continue to the loads page so typically this will auto populate with whatever your wind speed and your snow load are um, some regions in the u.s have special uh, case studies that you need to refer to for wind speed so if you're not using atc hazards uh, to get your information on wind speed and snow load um, you know you would just manually input it here whatever your uh, your settings are, but if it can automatically input this stuff for you, it will. Here you just want to say, you know, whatever your wind exposure is like. We're in a suburban environment, and then it doesn't get too windy in Southern California. We'll just do 115.
So for the purposes of this demonstration, I really want to show you the splice foot, which is one of our new attachments. So we're going to make believe that this is actually a comp shingle roof. Um, but of course, we could change that and I could show you the uh, the tile hooks as well, if that's what uh, people want, want to see. But we're going to start off with this just so I can kind of walk you through how it's done. Um, so you select your roof type and this affects, you know, how uh, the structural analysis is calculated, whether it's a mono pitch or a gable roof, um, flat roof will offer you different system types. Uh, so if you were to select the flat roof, it would offer you maybe our tilt up or the D dome, which is our dual tilt ballasted system. Um, but we're going to do a gable roof and just do a standard, uh, standard cross rail system, a flush mount composite shingle, you can name it if there's different names for the buildings and whatnot. So here it's looking good. You know, typically you wanna start from the uh, eave of the roof um, so that all of the modules line up on the bottom. But here, you know, with the satellite imagery, it gives you pretty good measurement. It's about 130 feet long, uh, the building. You'll click that. Bring it up to the peak. There we go. There's the first roof. And then we can uh, we can just say 25 and 25. Make it easy on ourselves. You can change the orientation. So if you if you were to design this roof, um, but you didn't want to draw it along the eave in the way that it's facing. So this is the lowest portion. Let's say the front is actually the lowest portion. You can change that. Um, and change the orientation and then something a little arrow to indicate the direction will pop off so right now at the bottom all of the uh, modules will align themselves in this orientation but if i were to do this and change it to 90.2 the pitch would be running this way running up this would be the lowest portion and all of the modules would be aligned in this direction so we'll go back again you can change your roof covering so if i realize that this wasn't comp shingle and I needed to use tile hooks, we can do that. Um, and then here we have some more information about the rafter spacing. I'm just gonna save this just in case, um, but I wanna show you, so right now we're in the, the, the base version of base, but when you add expert mode, you have a few more things that you can add, you know, where your rafters are on each edge and stuff like that. So, um, to make it as easy as possible just to design, you don't have to put all of that stuff in, but we do give you the option because we know like people, we know people like to use a fine comb um, when they're designing their systems, especially if they're trying to maximize efficiency. So here we have more, you know, wind load calculation and stuff like that on the roof. This is how we draw obstructions. So you get to this tab on the roof tab, here are the obstructions. You can kind of indicate what shape you want it to be and then add them. So I'll add a few of these uh, skylights or vents, whatever they may be. And then here you can, so this is how you edit the, the drawings. You can add more. You can rename them. So if I wanted to say, this is like vent one, I can do that. Make sure it's all nice. We'll say this is like 0.3 feet tall. You can show the shading, which is kind of cool. You see like that's that's the shading that you're gonna experience. So if I were to make this actually like three feet and then put that in there, you can see the effect that that would have on the modules nearby. So that's kind of a cool feature. You can change the time of year, uh, the time of day and get uh, a nice accurate reading on that. Um, but we got a couple similar obstructions. So I'm going to hit this button, which duplicates um, the system and just kind of drag them around. Now you can actually do the same thing with the roof. So you can duplicate them. So if you are working in say an apartment complex or a housing development where the houses have similar roof lines, you can save yourself some time and just duplicate the roof. Um, and it'll give you all of the same uh, measurements that you put in. So if it's 20 by 50, you know, 15, 20 degree pitch, it'll put all of that stuff in there. And if you've already designed the uh, solar array on the roof, when you duplicate that roof, it'll copy the solar array as well. So if you're doing, you know, three or four uh, buildings with the same array on them or um, the same shape, 
it'll just duplicate all of the work that you did. You can kind of save some time um, and just do it that way. So we've added in a few obstructions. You can kind of see how the shading uh, works with this. And here are some other, uh, some other features that just kind of allow you to see, um, you know, different aspects of the, of the obstruction. You can put, you know, angles and stuff on there, uh, physical measurements. Um, you can go into two dimensional view if you don't want to use the satellite viewer and, and kind of really fine tune um, some things. And then we're gonna keep driving. You can add some notes here. This will show up on the reports page if you want, although it's not necessary. And so now that we're on the design tab, the first thing that we have to do is pick our module manufacturer. Um, just gonna go through and make a nice round number, like 400 for our wattage. Um, here we have a ton of different modules loaded in already um, with all of their uh, measurements and stuff like that. If you do have a special module that we don't have in there for some reason, you can go in there and change uh, the measurements of the module. So let's say this one is like 40 inches wide and 55 pounds. I would like change the deal. Um, say this is like 76 inches, you know, you can change it up however you want, and then you can, you know, change the name as well. After selecting the module, it gives you the option of what kind of system you want to do, whether you want to do a shared rail to minimize the amount of attachments that you have to do um, and butt up two modules on the same rail, or if you want to use our standard cross rail system. Um, for our purposes, we'll use the cross rail. And when you select that, it gives you uh, a couple options or it, it makes those decisions for you that you will draw out your own module array. And of course, it'll be parallel to the roof. Um, here you can pick your orientation. You can change this later. Um, and we also have the option to do, say, portrait orientation with one row at the top at the bottom in landscape if you're trying to maximize your um, your, your energy density. We let you do that. Um, so we will add a module array. So you click that and then wait for your mouse to turn into the crosshair. And then let's draw it right over the obstructions and see you know, how that kind of changes how it looks. Draw that out. It doesn't uh, populate modules where there are obstructions. And uh, in the roof setting, um, you can go back to your obstructions and indicate if there needs to be two feet of spacing in between the nearest module and the obstruction, you can do that. Um, but it does have a default setting of the distance that you would need to be from, a, from an obstruction. So you can kind of hand tune that. Now that we have the module array drawn, I can show you some of these uh, more minute features. So here we have the pencil where you draw the outline array. You can add more, add a new array somewhere else on the roof. This is the eraser. So when you select this, you can remove uh, individual modules from the array. So let's say there is an obstruction here that I didn't draw. I can just take it away if I know that it's there. You can kind of see them underneath. You can actually remove them. So if you just want to do like, oh, did I hit it? Did I not? You can mess around with that. Um, when you have the uh, when you have the eraser selected, there are a couple other shortcuts. If you hold Shift and click it. It'll take the row or it'll take the column out if you or if you do control, it'll take the column out. If you do shift, it'll take the row out. Just some nifty little shortcuts. And then uh, you deselect the eraser. This will shrink the module field to automatically fit the array size that you've selected. This makes it a little bit easier to see things on the roof after you've designed them um, and keeps it nice and clean uh, so that you don't have any overlapping files or overlapping uh, vectors. Here you can copy the module array again. It'll give you a very similar uh, design, although if I were to take this out where there aren't obstructions, it'll fill in the whole thing. So we're gonna get rid of that. So it says we have the cross rail. We're using uh, the modules in a portrait orientation. And this is what I was mentioning, the portscape. 
So because I uh, made the module field kind of shrink, it'll be funky on that. So I'll do that and then I'll show you so it doesn't erase any. We'll do bottom row landscape. There you go. You can add them on the top or the bottom, um, but it allows for you to design uh, your system with portrait and landscape orientation modules, which is kind of cool. Um, you can specify your module clamp on this page, what the color of your system you would like it to be, whether you want it silver or black. Um, and then again, you can go through your measurements and see um, all of that good stuff. Here at the bottom, we have the array information, 38 modules for 15.2 kilowatt peak. And then here we have the thermal gaps. So depending on the size of your system, sometimes engineering letters will require you to put gaps in the middle of your array uh, to make it easy for access in the event of an emergency um, or for thermal expansion to account for the expansion of the rails under heat. Uh, so here you can indicate any uh, road that you would like. You can add in a, uh, a gap. And let's say if I deselect that, you can just kind of see there's a little uh, space there now, um, breaks up the array. If you don't have to, it doesn't put in an obstruction for you, but if you are required to do it, the base tool will put in a, uh, put in a thermal gap. Um, although there are some ways that you can work around depending on the size of the system um, to make them as symmetrical as possible or you know, just figure out whatever you need to do. So we'll, like I said, you can put it in this way. If you needed to, you could split these into two separate um, fields. Uh, two separate module fields. So these would be two separate blue boxes now and I could move them around, but we don't need to do that. So I'm gonna turn this off, this thermal gap, deselect that. Uh, you can also make just general rules. Like let's say every five modules I wanna break, you can say that as well. Although we're gonna keep it together for this. So now that we finished the design, we're moving on to the results tab and you can kind of see so we have this two foot rafter spacing and it looks like we are at uh, four to six foot spans, pretty good. Um, and you can see here, all of these black squares are attachments and all of these kind of dark blue sections on the rail are rail connectors. Now, something really cool that I'm excited to show y'all is our new attachments. So typically when people are using standard metallic flashings, you have to pry up the composite shingle and that can be really difficult, especially in hot climates, you know, that, that tar, um, it melts together. So we've heard from a lot of people, you know, in hot weather, when they're trying to pry up those tiles, you can rip the shingle um, and make more work for yourself because you have to cover it up, you know, goop it with M1 or whatever sealant you're using, um, get up to the third course, make sure that it's all sealed and stuff like that. So, you know, we know how labor intensive, you know, putting in attachments can be. So with the splice foot, uh, we've kind of eliminated the need to go under the shingle at all. Um, so let's select the, the splice foot XL, give you a little bit of room. Um, what's really cool about the splice foot is that it doesn't need to go under the shingle at all. You can go directly up to the composite shingle, just lay it on top. There's a, um, a sticky, what's called butyl rubber pad. Um, it's the same material that they use to hold down road reflectors on the road. Um, and this material bonds to the, uh, to the composite shingle. It doesn't like run away uh, and get really liquidy when it is hot outside. Um, it doesn't crack when it's cold. Um, but what's really cool is you don't need to drill pilot holes and you can literally just shoot your lag into this butyl and it'll drag it into the hole with the screw. It's a double helical screw and it'll self seal with that rubber just as you drive in the lag for the first time. So if you do need to, uh, to drill a pilot hole to find the rafter, it gives you a three by five pad of this rubber that'll self seal um, when you put it over. So you do have a little bit of um, coverage if you were to miss your pilot hole initially and then find it afterwards. So the splice foot has you know saved a lot of time on jobs. I was out on the roof uh, two weeks ago and the crew that we were working together with must have saved like two and a half hours not having to go back over and, and lay, you know, new courses of uh, sealant and, and put on their, their own flashings, you know, depending on 
your uh, jurisdiction, they may require that. Um, but this saves a lot of time and effort. And what's really cool is that the reason why we call it a splice foot is that you can use it as a rail connector. So you see all of these splices right here, all of these extra parts that you would have to lug up onto the roof and secure together. Here, you can use your attachment as a rail connector. So you don't need to, you can just put one screw or one T-bolt in there and just have the rail connected. Although when I selected that, it knows that you can just butt up two rails together on the same uh, attachment and then splice them. And that's a structural splice and you can count on that. Um, what's also really cool is normally you can, you know, just use two lag screws and go directly into the rafter. Although we do have the option where you can go deck attached and use four screws and go directly to, to the deck. Um, and so depending on, you know, if you're dealing with the difficult uh, rafter situation in the roof, or if you need to add an attachment here, but there isn't the structural support, you can do that. Um, if you need to add, uh, to add an attachment to splice the rail, you can do that and go directly into the deck. So that's a really cool feature. Um, you know, anything that makes life easier for the installers, that's, that's my business. So any feedback that you do have uh, is also greatly appreciated because we've had a lot of situations where, you know, great ideas have come from, you know, the people who are actually working with it every day, you know, that's the way it is. So we have different rail options. Um, some accouchement, we have some clips uh, and stuff like that. MLPE mounting kit, of course. Um, and then if we click to the next page, after specifying all of our components, everything looks good. It's calculated the weight and the uplift and the span and all of that. Here's a uh, basic system overview of your power generation and the modules you have. Here you can see we're pretty good on spacing. We're not overloading the roof, even with six foot. Uh, spans, deflection looks good. Um, everything is good. If there was an issue, there would be a banner right here saying that your spans are too large or whatever the issue would be. It would tell you on this page once it's done all of the calculations. So now we're at the summary page. You can look at the bill of materials and see all of the different parts that we have uh, added. Um, so we have the splice foot and we have a couple extra T-bolts because we've indicated that we want to use it as a rail connector as well. Um, so the, the splice foot comes kitted with the uh, two lag screws and one bolt needed to go rafter attach with the standard one uh, rail connection. But if you were going to splice, we add on a few T-bolts um, so that you can butt up two rails together on the same attachment and put them together. You can edit your bill of materials here. So if you're to click select, you can change the quantity of whatever you want. Let's say you just want to add a few more. It'll indicate that it has the weight and the sales unit. So these come in boxes of 20. So let's say, you know, you might use them in the future uh, and they'll come in handy. You can do it in box quantities. Um, but we'll revert to, uh, oops. We'll get rid of those changes, but yeah, you can go through, you can also add items on the bottom. So like if you wanted to add like, clamp or uh, yeah, if you wanted to add a clamp, all of our options will pop up um, and you can just add those to uh, your system. Um, so here you can change the status uh, just to you know lock the project so that no changes can be done once it's completed. Um, but we're just gonna save really quick now that we know where we're at. If you were to go back through and make some changes, you can just come back to the summary page and recalculate and it'll change the bill of materials for you, which is kind of cool. Um, because before you would have to go back to, like if you change the loads, you'd have to go back to the loads page and then click continue all the way through. But we've changed it so that you can just recalculate at the very end and it'll do all of that for you. So now we've gotten to the portion where you have your project done and designed and you're ready to send it to your customer or whoever, um, get that bill of material sent out so that you can get a purchase order placed. So the first thing that you can get is the, uh, the general report, and this will give you the structural analysis, a bill of materials. We are going to, we're gonna pull that up so I can just kind of show you what that looks like. Here we've got it, download.
Perfect. All right. I'll bring that over for you. So this is what our uh, report looks like once you finish it. Um, it has all of that basic information about the job, the location, the roof structure, um, all of that stuff. It has the module information, the dimensions, the output. And then it starts getting into the assembly plan. So this is helpful for the installer to kind of see how we um, have designed it to get together. There's the north orientation and the dimensions of the roof. Here you zoom in and you can see all of the attachments um, and how the rail should be running. It has the different roof zones indicated. Keep going through, it gives you some more structural information um, about the uh, module array, the capacity, um, you know, pressure that it's facing from different directions, um, uplift, weight, all of that good stuff. And then at the very end, on the last page, it'll give you the bill of materials. So here we have uh, you know, all of the, the parts that you'll need for this job. You can also get the bill of materials in an Excel document, um, which might be easier to pass along. And you can just get that. So if I were to click that, it would bring up a bill of materials in the Excel. I'll just click it and bring it up. Uh, you can also get a module plan where it will gray out certain uh, cells in Excel kind of show you the way that they're meant to be laid out, which is kind of cool for showing your installer what they, um, what the, the shape that has been designed is and makes it a little bit easier when you're planning and putting things together. Here we go. All right, there's the second. Item. So here's the bill of materials just in Excel, base 3.1 test bomb bill of materials, and you have everything right here as well. Um, has all of the weights and stuff like that. So when you provide that to uh, whoever you're placing your order with, that makes life a little bit easier. And then one of the newer features that we've added to the summary page is this CAD export. So you can get uh, your roofs done in CAD drawing. Uh, file extension. So we can get you a CAD file in .dwg and generate that for you um, if you need to pass that on to your engineers or one of your designers. Uh, we now have the ability to provide those files from our design tool. Um, we have a few other crossovers with um, different design tools, um, such as SolarEdge, uh, their inverter design tool, um, Fronius, uh, SMA. So we have a few options here, and this will bring you to uh, their design tools, and it it bridges. So you've designed the system, and if you were to bring it over to the Solar Edge tool, everything that you've done in here will transfer over there, um, and it'll show you the exact uh, performance of your modules given their uh, orientation. Um, and they have some other cool features on there that'll help you. Um, you know, whether it's in the sales process or on the, on the back end, um, figuring out what the actual production will be. Um, we've got a few other, yeah, we are um, in the process of adding a couple uh, new partnerships. Um, soon we should have Helioscope available as a uh, partner where you can design in Helioscope and then transfer over to base and it'll kick out a bill of materials for you. So, you know, I know a lot of people use Celioscope. Um, so we've tried to make it as easy as possible. Uh, you'll still be able to use Celioscope and then just kick it into base and we'll give you a bill of materials. So no extra work needed um, and just make it as easy as possible. That's the name of the game. So that's the basic run through of how to design a system in base. Um, some little tips and tricks. Uh, to move past and all of the, the goodies that you can get at the end. Um, you've been a great audience, I appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions that they wanna bring up or just things that they wanna talk about? Um, I'm happy to, to share any information that I may have. I or if anybody it. else from uh, the K2 team wants to jump in. As of right something. now, we, we don't have any questions, but if there are any, we do have 
you know, about 10 minutes of time left. So if you guys have questions, please type them in the Q&A. Or if you are on YouTube in the uh, live stream chat there, just type them in there and we'll get them answered. Again, if you're ever using the base tool and you have any questions, this chat feature will link you directly to Lucerai um, and we will reach out to, to help you. Um, also, uh, we'll provide our, our personal contact information. Um, and so depending on where your territory is, Lucerai will be able to help you, walk you through the design, you know, from start to finish, whatever you need, we're always happy to help um, and coach, coach you up. Uh, so that we can, you know, work together. Um, and if you do have any feedback on product or um, ease of use of our design tool, that's greatly appreciated as well. Maybe Brendan, just uh, show where we can access Sherpa from the website as well. Oh yeah. So you can either click this, I'll open it in a, in a new tab. So if you're in base, you can just click on the, on the chat feature. do this. So here it'll give you the option of using WhatsApp or iMessage. Um, you can do whatever. I don't have a Mac, uh, so I would use WhatsApp. Um, although you can use the Sherpa on your iPhone or iPad or whatever. Um, you can do that. And so when you, yeah, I don't have WhatsApp installed, but it, it is very simple to reach. And so we'll go to the, uh, we'll go to the K2 website. Um, and I'll just kind of show you how you can get there as well. So, um, oops. Oh, we have a question. Let's see. There have been times where I'm designing on a mono pitch gable or hip roof where they don't conform to a rectangular, trapezoidal, or triangular shape that K2 seems to make you use. Is there any way to use the polygon roof shape on a roof type other than flat? Yes, that has been an issue in the past. Um, you know, with the new uh, design, with the new design requirements for ASCE 716, those calculations will be handled. Um, with our new uh, like uplift calculator. So you should be able to use uh, polygon shaped roofs um, to design a pitched roof system. Um, yeah, I know that, you know, roof types can be very wonky um, and they're not even always level. Um, so when you have those like imperfect trapezoidal shapes and stuff like that, I understand that it can be kind of frustrating. Um, if you do have uh, a problem like that in the meantime before, 716 solves that, feel free to reach out um, and we can find a way to get you the bill of materials that you need. Um, we can help, uh, you know, fix, uh, design the project to how you need it to be. Um, and we can get you what you need. But yeah, if you do run into that again, please do reach out. Um, you know, every obstacle that we've come across in base has become, you know, a learning point and we've you know, fixed it and moved on from it. So, you know, we don't always know about these things until it's brought up by our customers. Um, you know, people using it from a different perspective and, and different case studies that I haven't seen before. Um, that has been an issue in the past, but we're working on it right now to fix. So hopefully with 716, that won't be an issue for anybody anymore. But until then, and that will be soon, but until then, feel free to reach out and we're happy to help and we can get you what you need in terms of bill of materials or structural analysis, um, stuff like that. We'll get you that. Um, yeah, so we're back on the uh, K2 webpage. Right up at the very top, we have our office phone number, the info email, and then right here is the K2 Sherpa. So you can go to base just from the top, uh, from the top section. You can find installers, you can find distributors, uh, but yeah, you can also just click on the Sherpa at the very top point of the website um, to get assistance. And you're like, I'm good to go. Let's chat, and it'll give us the same thing that it gave me earlier. 
I'll have WhatsApp on my computer. But just goes to show, you know, there's more than one way uh, that you can go about this and, you know, whatever fits your fancy, um, you know, we're there to support you and help get your projects done. Um, are there any more questions or comments from my team that we should put in? I think that was it, but if you don't mind just toggling to the contact section and show where they can find their sales rep information, I think we can oh, yeah. move off with that. Let's go find your sales rep. So here you can find um, you know anybody that you need to talk to depending on your territory. Um, you know it's been split up a decent amount, but uh, here are some of the the outside salespeople that Luce and I support. Um, if you do have any questions on finding a distributor, you have questions on um, pricing and stuff like that, feel free to call uh, these guys and they're happy to help. If you have more uh, fine grain technical questions, um, you can talk to our technical sales team. Um, Luce or I are probably your best point of contact for uh, product questions. If you have questions about logistics, um, purchase orders, shipping, and stuff like that, Nancy and Kelsey would be your go-to. And then Ale helps manage the entire team. Um, so that is uh, all of our contact information right there. Um, again, feel free, call me anytime. You know, I represent uh, the East Coast and the South and a little bit in Los Angeles. So, you know, any time of day you call me, uh, I'm there and I'm happy to help, especially if you're on the roof. Um, let me know because we don't want anybody to be wasting time struggling to figure out something. So if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to call. So yeah, here's all of our contact information. And then uh, got a we little did. distracted. What, what was that? Sorry, we did get one more question in the chat if you wanna oh, yes. answer that about staggering. In my experience, when staggering rows of modules, the only way that you can stagger them is the distance of an entire module. Is there a way to stagger rows of modules half? Um, I believe so in the shared rail option. Uh, it allows you to stagger modules in kind of like a trapezoidal fashion. Although that is something that we're working on to be able to grab a module and kind of nudge it to the side to adjust the alignment. Um, We have heard that uh, before, so let's let's see. I guess it would be easier on a trapezoidal portion. Um, Unfortunately, I think I would have to redraw the roof on that one. Um, but yeah, in terms of staggering them like half modules uh, and kind of stacking them up like that, um, that is something that we're working on, um, you know, being able to adjust the module location um, and how they line up. Like we've, we've been doing that with the, the portscape option and um, obviously moving these modules just a little bit is a huge help uh, to installers when they're trying to design systems. So um, we're aware of that and trying to put that into the system as we speak. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Uh, that was a great question. Um, and then as we were scrolling through, we came across the splice foot, just in case um, you haven't seen it before. I just kind of want to pull it up so you can see what I was talking about. Um, here is the, the splice foot X, um, and it has two slotted holes so you can butt up two rails together on it. Um, this video is pretty neat, but, um, here, I'll just click through so you can see there's the, the beetle pad on the bottom. Um, they're heating it up so that, uh, just kind of shows the, the durability of it. Um, so after you drill it in, you can go direct to deck or you can go in or after. And then here we have, um, let's see. 
Okay, so we've got it there. Where's the splice? There we go. So we have two rails um, butting up together and then they're connected and spliced on the attachment. So that eliminates a need uh, for a part that you would have to order or stock. Um, and you can just turn your regular attachment into a splice with one extra T-bolt. So that's pretty cool. Um, makes life a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, so that's the splice foot. That's our new uh, big attachment for composite shingle roofs. And then of course we have a whole new line of tile hooks and tile replacement flashings for W, S, flat tile. Um, and we have metal flashings uh, for those as well. Um, we are also uh, starting to come out with tile hooks with the beetle pad on the bottom. So if you were in a jurisdiction that requires, um, you know, maybe three layers of uh, flashing, if you have to like spray some adhesive and then put maybe like a mesh over and then paint rubber over that, over the attachment, this can save you a lot of time. Um, you know, really just once over on all of these attachments, you don't have to go back and, uh, you know, reapply or do a second layer. This has been field tested for over 20 years. Um, by roof tech and uh, they've had no, no complaints or, or problems with it over that time. Um, they've been using it in Japan for even longer um, and they have some crazy storms, some crazy wind conditions, some steep roofs. So this has really been through the fire and it's come out clean. Um, this is a really solid attachment. And so that's you know kind of why I'm, I'm pushing it so hard. I feel like it just makes life a lot easier for the installer, really just peel off the paper and drill it into the rafter and you're good to go. Um, and if you can eliminate some pieces like a rail connector in the meantime, that's great as well. Um, but yeah, if, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, I think we are nearing the end of my time. Oh, I actually gone over a little bit. Um, but again, thank you for joining. Hopefully uh, you were all able to stay awake through my monotonous presentation. Um, but yeah, that's the base tool. Um, some of the new changes that we've made to make your life easier and some of the parts that'll make life easier for the guys up on the roof. Thank you, Brendan. And uh, just so everyone's aware, we'll also have our last webinar of the year next Wednesday, which will be on base again, but directing toward the splice foot attachment. Um, so make sure to sign up for that if you haven't already. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. We appreciate it and have a great weekend.